Welcome everyone. We are extremely pleased today to have with us Ming Ming Yang. Ming Ming received her PhD from the MIT Physics Department last September. She was uh, part of a team of uh, various scientists who were responsible uh, for their work on the Large Hadron Collider for the discovery of the Higgs boson. Ming Ming worked on searching for the Higgs boson through its photon decay at the LHC in CERN, which is the European Organization for Nuclear Research. Since then, uh, Ming Ming has been traveling around the world, sharing her story and meeting with different people. We are so delighted to have her with us today to share her experiences and take us through her journey. Thank you. Uh, thank you very much uh, for the introduction. Uh, good afternoon, everyone. This is a very colorful stage, and my heart <laughs> is beating a little bit fast. Uh, I'm Ming Ming Yang. Um, last summer, I submitted my PhD thesis to the MIT Physics Department about the discovery of the Higgs boson and the measurements of its properties through the two-photon decay. And I have been traveling since then. I'm writing a story on the road. This story is not just about science, but also about people behind this scientific discovery. There is a huge beauty in the human activities that I experienced through the search of the Higgs boson. And I would like to deliver it to more people in the world. The name of the story is the discovery. And I would like to tell the story to you today. So do not worry if you do not understand all the details. It's just like me uh, looking at a painting or listening to a piece of music. I not necessarily understand all the detail, but I can still feel it as a whole. So please do not leave before I finish the story. And please feel it. OK, are you ready? Um, let me start from the night when we first unblinded the Higgs search result. The night before June 15, 2012, I started writing the unblinding slides. My teammates, Fabian Stokely, postdoctoral researcher from Switzerland, and Josh Ben David, senior graduate student from Canada, continued working towards the final, slot, final plots. Meanwhile, our colleagues on another team, students and the researchers of several institutes from different countries, are working independently towards the same goal. This was going to be a sleepless night for the researchers in a working group of the CMS experiment at the Large Hadron Collider of a European Organization for Nuclear Research, searching for the Higgs boson through its decay into two photons. About one quarter century ago, before this June night, my life started in Nanjing, one of the Asian capitals in China. My name is Ming Ming. In Chinese, Ming equals to sun plus moon, both associated with light. Since the particle of light is called photon, if you want, you can also call me photon photon. I don't think my parents gave me this name in order to encourage me to search for the Higgs boson through its decay into two photons, because my parents have no idea what is a Higgs boson. But I do thank them for giving me a happy childhood with little constraint and let me grow freely into myself. When I was 13 years old, every weekday, I walk between my home and my middle school, 40 minutes in the morning, 40 minutes in the afternoon. On the road, I think about various kinds of questions. What score would I get for the pass exam? What to eat tonight? I usually run out of such daily life questions uh, about halfway, and ended up thinking about what is the fundamental nature of the world? Why do we exist? I don't think I reached any conclusion 
on those profound questions on that road at that time. But I suspected thinking about those questions somehow transported me to a particular space at a particular time to unblind the search results of the Higgs boson along with my colleagues. And this result is crucial to answer one of the fundamental questions of the particle physics. What is the origin of mass? At this moment, the standard model of particle physics has survived all the experimental tests since its foundation about a half century ago. The standard model is a theory endeavoring to describe all matter and all forces in the universe, except for gravity. As dozens of fundamental particles, how fundamental is fundamental? Is an atom considered as a fundamental particle? The answer is no. Because when we look closely into an atom, we see it is actually made up of a particle called proton, surrounded by another particle called the electron. And when we look further into the proton, we see it is made up of three particles called quarks. However, when we look as closely as we can into the quark, and electron, we do not see any subparticle inside. And electrons and quarks are considered as fundamental particles. According to the standard model, all the fundamental particles are originally massless, like photon, the particle carrying electromagnetic force, also known as a particle of light, whose speed in the space time is the maximum allowed speed, the speed of light. However, a hypothetical field permitting over space and through time and this lightness of being. And it interacts with the fundamental particles like water dragging down the fish from the swimming of speed of light. And it gives mass to the fundamental particles which lead to the formation of structures. The stars, Earth, mountains, and we, human beings. To prove the existence of this field generating mass that underlie our existence, the observation of the rip of the field, the last undetected fundamental particle, also called the Higgs boson, was a key. Generations of experimental particle physicists had been searching for the Higgs boson, but no, ev no evidence is found. The mass of the Higgs boson is unknown, except for a rough larger bond, upper bond, and the possibility of a low Higgs mass is excluded. Why the Higgs boson is so difficult to be detected? First, it is very difficult to be produced. The Higgs boson is expected to be produced from the collision between a pair of particles, for example, protons, where the original particles are destroyed and their energies are converted to the mass of the Higgs boson. The Higgs boson has a large mass. That means it needs large energy to be produced. And even the energy is enough the production rate of the Higgs boson is extremely low, about one out of billions of collisions. Therefore, a very powerful collider is needed to provide intense proton beams and bring them into collisions at the speed, almost the speed of light, in order to create the Higgs boson in a reasonable amount of time. Second, even the Higgs boson is produced it decays immediately into different types of particles. And only these decayed particles can be de detected. Given a comprehensive detector to identify different types of particles and measure their energies and moving directions. An enormous amount of background collisions, which does not produce the Higgs boson, but the particles either exactly the same or very similar to the Higgs decay. And the physicists have to analyze the data collected from millions of billions collisions in order to illuminate 
the statistical evidence of the Higgs boson. Finally, the Large Hadron Collider is constructed. The Large Hadron Collider is a 27 kilometer ring. Uh, underneath the area between Geneva Lake and Jura Mountains. And it is designed to collide two beams of protons at energies up to 14 TeV, where 1 TeV equals to 1,000 GeV, and 1 GeV is about the mass of a proton. This collision energy is seven times that of the previous, um, highest energy of the previous um, highest uh, most powerful collider. And the construction of the Large Hadron Collider, along with its two largest experiments, CMS and ATLAS, are centered on proving or excluding the existence of the Higgs boson. Both experiments have a giant cylindrical detector, dozens of lengths, dozens of meters uh, in length, okay, and half that length in diameter and a collaboration of thousands of physicists and engineers uh, all over the world. Each experiment is to conduct independent Higgs search through multiple search channels over a wide range of possible Higgs mass. And each search channel is to search for the Higgs boson through a particularly type of the Higgs decay, which is sensitive to a certain range of the Higgs mass. In 2011, when the Large Hadron Collider just ramp up the rate of proton-proton collisions at energy of 7 TeV, I came to CERN to work on my PhD thesis, searching for the Higgs boson through the two-photon channel, one of the five main search channels of the Higgs boson, along with my teammates from MIT and our colleagues within the Higgs to two-photon working group of the CMS experiment by analyzing the data collected from the same detector. This plot shows you a collision event producing two photons and caught by the detector, where the blue cylindrical layer represents the detector called electromagnetic calorimeter, made up tens of thousands of crystals, and the two red bars represent the energy deposit of the photons into the detector. The two photon search channel looks for two energetic photons from the Higgs decay. And it is one of the most promising channels for the Higgs discovery when the Higgs mass is relatively low, between 110 GeV and 150 GeV. Thanks to the electromagnetic uh, calorimeter, a uh, photon can be clearly identified. Furthermore, the energies could be measured with excellent resolution, from which a quantity called two-photon mass can be reconstructed precisely for each photon pair. And this allows us constructing a characteristic, a characteristic spectrum of the two-photon mass of the identified photon pairs, as shown on the right plot. In this spectrum, a signal peak due to a Higgs boson centered on the Higgs mass with its width determined by the two photon mass resolution will sit on top of a smoothly falling slope of the background, which would give persuasive evidence if the Higgs boson exists. Despite the appealing feature of this signal peak, um, the Higgs boson actually does not uh, quite frequently decays to two photons. How rare is a two photon decay? It is about one out of hundreds of the decay of already rarely produced Higgs boson. So the great challenge facing this search channel is to identify the small peak from the large background underneath. Facing this challenge, we developed an analysis strategy to classify the photon pairs, the ones more likely from the Higgs decay and have better mass resolution are selected into a higher ranking class, which will have a sharper peak in the mass spectrum and add more sensitivity to the Higgs signal. Finally, we extract the signal 
by comparing the observed spectra of all the classes with models of expected signal plus background spectra. If there's any excess of the photon pairs above the background expectation uh, is observed, we estimate the significance of the excess uh, as shown on the right plot. The black curve shows the probability that the observed excess is due to the fluctuation of the, of the background. If the lowest probability is about one out of a thousand, corresponding to a, a significance about three sigma, we say there's the evidence of a new particle. And if the probability is about dozens out of a million, corresponding to four sigma, we say there's a convincing evidence. And if the probability reaches one out of three and a half a million, corresponding to five sigma, we claim the discovery of a new particle. Okay, it takes a couple of minutes to say, however, yes to do. In order to reach the final mass spectra, we need to go through many steps in analysis, from the photon identification, photon energy reconstruction, photon direction of reconstruction, and the photon pair classification. This plot gives you an example of the observed mass spectra from one of the classes. The black data point shows the observed number of pairs of photons as a function of the two photon mass. And the red curve is the distribution of signal plus background fit to the observed data. If the Higgs boson exists, we would expect to see an excess of photon pairs as shown like this data point uh, jumping from the background, uh, smoothly falling background. By analyzing the 2011 data, we observed an excess of photon pairs above the background ex expectation. Another channel in the CMS experiment, the 2Z boson channel also observed an excess, but not as significant. And the combined excess at the CMS experiment is dominant by the excess from the 2 photon channel. A similar excess is also observed at the Atlas experiment, dominant by the excess of its two photon channel as well. To determine the source of this excess, whether it is from the background fluctuation or a real signal, the analysis of the 2012 data is critical. We improved our analysis and we re-optimized it to accommodate the enhanced energy to ATV and to avoid any possibility to bias the results. For example, artificially create a peak in the spectrum. We do the analysis in a strictly blind manner. That means we do not look at the signal region in the mass spectrum between 110 GeV to 150 GeV until our analysis is fully fixed and verified. And all the other Higgs channel also progress under the blend. Finally, we reached this night before June 15, 2012. In order to reach this night, we had gone through many sleepless nights working on analysis. Through the development of different kinds of components of the analysis, to multiple rounds of producing results to keep updated with the increased data and improved calibration of the detector. We had multiple teams in the Higgs 2 2 photon working group, each team running an independent analysis framework. Those teams had also gone through constructive, well, sometimes fierce computations on the analysis methods, but ultimately strove together for the final re re results. To finalize the analysis for the unblending and to synchronize among different teams equals to a huge effort of the entire group. And finally, two teams synchronized to a satisfactory level. Each team 
was going to produce a set of unbanded results to cross-check. Among all the teams, the MIT two photon team is a small team known for all coffee and no sleep. Our, our coffee machine worked so hard and it was finally broken. As a result, our proposed method was determined by uh, the group as a main analysis method. Besides the coffee machine, working with me day and night are my teammates. So this guy with an exploding hair is Josh David, senior graduate, senior graduate student from Canada. Josh effectively works 24 hours every day. Whenever I need a discussion, 2 a.m., 3 a.m., 4 a.m., 5 a.m., Josh is always there on, online or on the phone. And our conversation can write a book about 1,000 pages, all about the search for the Higgs boson. And this guy, he looks very shy. Uh, he is Fabian Stokely, a postdoctoral researcher from Switzerland. And Fabian always wear the same black t-shirt. And this guy is Christoph Paus. Uh, my PhD supervisor from Germany, and he fly between MIT and CERN every other week. You might think, where's me? So this is me uh, in the window. And uh, I have to admit that I didn't, I didn't have time to brush teeth for months, and uh, I no longer care. Uh, there's dozens more colleagues from MIT working on different uh, Higgs search channel a detector or computing. And uh, they didn't care whether I brushed teeth uh, either. Well, you might want to ask, how do you think about uh, these days? <sighs> there are thousands of feelings difficult to say. I wish I had invited you to my office at CERN Building 32, fourth floor. There is not much room. And if you come during the summer, there's no air conditioner. And my desk is so small, it can hold nothing uh, but a few books and a laptop. <sighs> However, look through the window. This is a view that you can see. And listen to the music that emanates the corridor. And what I want to say can be summarized as the following. Late night, look deep into the sky. Turn on music loudly, loudly, and sing along. Good time to free the soul and face the unknown. As the night was progressing, Christoph was about to catch another flight. Having fixed some problem in our computer cluster at MIT, important for producing the final analysis results, Christoph was flying to CERN for the unblinded event in the coming afternoon. The event that unblinded search results from all the channels were presented to the entire CMS collaboration for the first time. I wrote down my memory about that night and the unblinded event in the coming afternoon into my story. And I would like to share a little bit with you. I stayed in a room of the Sun Hostel last night. Within three minutes walk from my office, 40 minutes walk from my studio in San Jenny Play, a small town at the foot of the Jura Mountains. The past couple of weeks were so intense that I almost live at CERN with few hours of sleep at the task and 10 cups of coffee many of the days. And since there was almost no time to eat, there was no need to brush teeth. Extremely tired, but also extremely excited, I wrote down the slide title, Search for a standard model Higgs boson decaying into two photons on blinding. Representing the Higgs to two photon working group, I was going to unblind our Higgs search results to the entire CMS collaboration in the coming afternoon. The results still sitting in the dark 
waiting to be uncovered. During the past year, I was used to missing the last bus at 1 a.m. from CERN to San Jenny Play and walking back along with the Jura Mountains under the night. Sometimes the analysis work got so busy that even such a work was not affordable. Instead, I would stay at the desk in my office over the night or move to the Sun Hostel during the critical time, like this night, expecting a couple of hours rest on the bed to refresh, but still remaining at the desk the entire night. The staff at the Sun Hostel was used to my unexpected interruptions and being able to find me a room. But no single room was left for this night. All available was a double room. I paid for the room without hesitation. Not because I was rich. There was not much left of a graduate student's salary after paying the rent, meal, and the coffee. But the chance to work together with these people in this space at this time towards these results was only once. If, even if I had to die for the moment, I die. Everything else is out of concern. The night deepened, folding all the sleepless nights into the dark sky towards the unknown. The slides grow with analysis descriptions and the validation plots, reaching the blank region for the final plots. The last round of cross checks started between the two teams with information flowing through an email thread. Finally, the expected results and the yields of photon pairs are great. Time to look into the signal region. Around 3 a.m., both teams unblinded the two photon mass spectra of the 2012 data. Clear access jumping from the falling spectra of multiple classes around 125 GeV, about the same place of the access that we observed from the 2011 data. A real signal is there. It was not spoken out, but I heard the yields bursting out from the huts at different ends. Enormous excitement flowed out, permitting silently in the air. I would jump through the window into the sky with the speed of light, but in the end, stood together with the Grand Jura Mountains quietly upon the ground, watching the pairs of photons passing through layers of nights. Later in the morning, we had a quick gathering together with more colleagues from the Higgs to two photon working group in a small meeting room at CERN. Everybody looked extremely excited despite not sleeping much. We tried not to speak loudly since we had to keep the secret until the unblinded event in the afternoon. Still more plots to make. We soon went back to the work with more colleagues from different teams joining to help. At this time, all our hearts were bound together. I kept modifying the slides with suggestions from my colleagues. Well, new plots continually come of various statistical results or two photon mass spectra being updated with final granularity or refined style. As time approached the unblinding event, I started putting the final version of the plots from my colleagues onto the pages, one after another. Each plot, a great trust falling silently upon my heart. Time passes 3 p.m. I finally finished the slides with, with the last plot just sent from Fabian. Our other colleagues, after this super quick and collaborative effort, had left earlier to the unblinding event, which had already started at the same building called Filtration Plant. Our channel was the second to unblind, starting at 3.30 p.m. We saved the slides onto a flash disk and walked quickly towards the conference room. Soon, we arrived. Fabian opened the door. A hot current flowed out the room 
was packed with CMS colleagues. All the seats were taken. Many colleagues sat on the floor or stood against the wall. There are probably also hundreds of colleagues connecting through the video link. Good luck, said he. One of the good lucks I have received from my colleagues since the morning. I carried the slides and moved slowly through the field of my colleagues. My body got heavier and heavier as the lives of more and more people connected to my own. My teammates always giving the strongest support. My Higgs to two photons colleagues striving together on the unblinding night and the entire group having worked extremely hard together since last year. Representing them, I was going to unblind our Higgs search results. The CMS colleagues having worked on different stages and aspects of the experiment during the past 20 years, leading to the final data analysis for the Higgs search from design, construction, commission to operation, from hardware, software to computing, from data taking, calibration, reconstruction to validation. The colleagues working on the different Higgs search, search channels trying to answer the same question, and the colleagues working on the different physics topics from the precision measurements within the standard model to the search beyond the standard model, all trying to deepen and enlarge the same drawing of fundamental particle physics. Many of them were in this room or on the video link, waiting to see and to listen to the results. The Atlas colleagues working towards the same goal the Large Hadron, large hadron Colliders providing the most powerful and intense proton beams. The generations of experimental particle physicists searching for the Higgs boson. The theoretical physicists whose work led to the prediction of this particle about half a century ago. And all the physicists from the experimental and the theoretical sides working together to reach the current understanding of the fundamental components of matter and force over the past hundred years. And all the human beings craving to understand nature and ourselves, asking and searching across the vast space and time. Some of us got together in this space at this time. The Higgs to two photon presentation was starting my heart was beating violently. My mind was calm. Please, everybody, get ready for the next 15 minutes. These, fifth, these 15 minutes would become a part of our common memories. Please let me quickly, quickly show you uh, a couple of minutes from these 15 minutes. Since there's no sound, so um, I just show you very quickly. Tight digest category, 
under the rust, which are uh, very difficult to see by eye, is for different categories. And the truly advanced one is on the left side, which is a combined result of the 2011 and the 2012. Okay, <coughs> so this is a p value of 2011 and 2012. This black one, okay, this is the combined. You can see it's a beyond which light, okay, one, two, three, and four. <laughs> 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 the green, the green, the green is, the, is for the sun PV and the magenta. The unblinded two photon results giving the first convincing evidence of the existence of a new particle. Night of that day, CERN Building 2, fourth floor, we just experienced a historic moment, said Christoph. Yes. We did, not just in the history of science. I did not speak out. What else do I still remember during that day? The smiles from the bottom of everyone's heart. Our final results continue showing an excess around 125 GeV, which combined with all the other Higgs channels um, gave the significance of access reach five sigma. The conventional criteria to, cl to claim the discovery of a new particle. In the same time, a similar access was also observed from the Atlas experiment. On July 4th, 2012, both experiments announced the discovery of a new particle at CERN in a joint seminar with a 36 International Conference of High Energy Physics held at Melbourne, Australia. And you can see our final plots showing both the signal and the significance of the excess. And you can also see the pictures at the bottom showing the situation in the auditorium at CERN on that day. Fabian was taking a night shift, and he didn't make it to the auditorium. And we didn't stop working on that day. And we did not have too much time to celebrate, Bef just uh, except for taking a cup of beers together. The world started swirling while we kept working. The center of a storm was always quiet. We didn't get any award, but we have already got the best award from nature itself. After the discovery, we continue to verify the observation of the new particle and measure its properties and check its compatibility with his bosa. On June 15, 2015, I submit my PhD thesis, which concluded the journey that I had experienced with my teammates and colleagues with a standalone discovery of the Higgs boson through the two photon channel. And I have been traveling since then and write this story, the discovery. I want to share you the end part of this story. This is the end of my story of searching for the Higgs boson. During my travel from my hometown to edge of Alaska, I have encountered different people on the road. High school students, bookshop staff, elementary school teacher, businessman, piano technician, taxi driver, probation officer, raspberry farmer, plumber, mechanic, air flight controller, coffee shop worker, lawyer, writer, art gallery host, firefighter, painter, drummer, area silk dancer, gold miner, single-handed sailor, fishermen. It is my pleasure to share with them the Higgs search story and listen to their stories back and find how similar the story of fishermen searching for the salmon at the Bering Sea to our story of searching for the Higgs boson among the data sea. The hardship, the friendship, the passion, and the feeling 
of the power and beauty of nature. After all, all human activities share the same common ground. And I'm glad to receive a small toy occasionally, a red Alaska crab from nine-year-old Jenna. Sometimes I'm asked, what is the significance of searching for the Higgs boson to me and to human beings? I have been thinking about these questions myself. When walking on the road between CERN and San Juni Play, when writing my thesis, and when sitting on the train. I still remember a conversation with Christoph at, B at CERN Building 32, fourth floor, in 2011. I told him that no matter whether we make a discovery or not, and I, whether I would get a PhD or not, I would never regret coming and working here. This is my choice of life, and I want to say the same now. It is thrilling to have been deeply involved with the milestone of the discovery of the Higgs boson. But having working together with these people in that space at that time itself is thrilling no matter the outcome. To me, connecting to the generations of physicists pursuing a common goal, witnessing and devoting myself to the monumental effort of human beings, along with all the colleagues, discovering and interacting with all the beautiful minds and hearts, continuously discovering myself and feeling the deep harmony with nature are the most precious parts of the journey searching for the Higgs boson. All my work is not for a PhD and even not for the Higgs discovery, but for life itself. And it has already been finished long before and has been contained in all the moments. My main motivation to write a thesis is to use the opportunity to tell these people I have worked with that I love them. The analysis for the Higgs search could be repeated, but those moments and the stories of these people are not replaceable. Many of the stories are very lively. They, prob they probably will never be stated but they have been detected and stored in my heart. And probably only the people who have experienced and witnessed these stories would feel the deepest resonance. The past journey has been wonderful, especially because I have shared it with some people who, whenever I think of them, bring hot tears to my eyes. I would choose the same way to spend my 20s again and again if I were given the infinite chance to step back and infinite ways to choose. I will continue to discover the future from all the uncertainties, following the sky above me and the road within my heart. I hope this road will lead to the liberation of the soul and the enrichment of the spirit of a human being and of human beings, as what this Higgs search journey should ultimately lead to. The train keeps moving into vast space at the front of time. What is the ultimate reality? Is the observed particle the ripple of the field, slowing down the particles with mass, such that they could get together to form the structures in the universe, including ourselves, as described by the standard model of particle physics. Our understanding always progress with time, and the future will unblind. What is sure for the moment, searching for the Higgs boson does bring us together to experience a series of events in that space and time, becoming a monumental part of our, a fundamental part of our existence and a monumental part of human history. All the information we have been obtained from the proton-proton collisions at the Large Hadron Collider, along with all the efforts of generations of physicists and engineers over the world, all the sleepless nights, all the memorial, memorial moments, all the collisions among ourselves, all the beautiful minds and hearts, all the emotions and all the stories are folded into the results sent towards the future. 
passing through layers of time, as pairs of photons passing through layers of night, as what we have received from our predecessors. And all the significance is already contained in the human activities that connect us with each, with each other, with nature, and with ourselves. At this moment, my heart has already melted into infinite pair of protons colliding at infinite points in that space and time, producing infinite pair, producing infinite number of Higgs bosons, decaying to infinite pairs of photons, carrying all my infinite traveling moments flying towards the future. What is eternity? Every moment is eternity. This story is for you and for students and researchers who silently devote all of themselves to the search for the Higgs boson. Thank you for listening. <laughs>I was actually at Atlas at the same time, so brings back a lot of memories. Uh, I was in the BSM Higgs group. So I, I just wanted your uh, opinion about what was your feeling towards the Higgs being more or less standard model-like? Did you have any thoughts about that? The Higgs boson is more standard model-like. Uh, it's one good thing in a way that it makes the standard model itself consistent. And that means our understanding in that phase space of matter and force is complete. But in the same time, we know that there are many other things we do not know. And all we know about matter and force actually is about 5% in the universe. And the other 25% is so-called dark matter. 70% is called dark energy. At this point, we do not have much knowledge about them. So I think this part get complete gives us a stepping stone which sets the foundation for us to search towards the future. So one step at a time. Um, so what's next for you personally? The future is contained in now. So by asking what is next for me, so let me say what is now for me. Um, I think for, my, for me personally, I was extremely focused on the search for the Higgs boson during the past few years. And I'm a little bit like defocusing for the moment because searching for the Higgs boson is kind of in one direction in the face space of human activities. But there are many, many, many other directions, many, many other dimensions. And I hope to take this opportunity to explore one thing I feel is that I, for me, I want to do two things. First is I see the huge, huge beauty in the human activities in the search for the Higgs boson. And I would like to bring that from that face space to the larger face space of human beings to bring the beauty into the consciousness of human beings. But in the same time, I would also like to uh, explore and observe and listen to the stories of other people to see how can we work together towards the future and which uh, direction that I can contribute the best in the future to the humanity. Uh, thank you very much.